So I will present us again. We are Our Ladies Freiburg. I'm Elisa, Divya, and Kaila are also in the organization team. Julia also helps a lot, has been part of a lot of our meetups. Um, so the idea today is to like give an, an introdu introduction to visualizing like geographical data using R. And I will just um, do an overview of some packages you can use, some data you can use. Um, I think, so visualize, visualizing geographical data is a really broad topic. Uh, we can do just word visualizations to very small scale visualizations. So I have chosen like different things that I guess it would be interesting like for a broader yeah, public. And so actually I work in environmental science, so I use a lot of these tools, not only to visualize data, also like to analyze data, but I will focus mostly on the visualization, like the analysis is also another meetup that we could do. Um, and yeah, uh, for those that have joined recently, I have to send again the link. Um, you can download everything we are going to, to show from that link. Um, yeah. And um, feel free to ask any questions. Uh, you can unmute yourself and ask directly. You can also write uh, on the chat. Um, Divya and Kyla will be having a look at it. Thank you both. <laughs> um, yeah. So I will start sharing my computer, uh, my screen. Um, so I will share the screen. So that's the code for that's the link. <laughs> so I, I in that link. So in that link I sent you, it's the same link you were looking at. You can you will get all this data. I as the the way I used to share everything is trying to use an um, an R project. Um, but now I will directly open my, yeah, open the file. So, um, the first thing I want to talk with you is like how we do, um, maps directly using, directly using ggplot. I'm curious on how I will stop sharing again. I'm curious about like how many of you, I guess all of you have already used R and all of you probably know ggplot. I don't know if you want to raise hands or say yes, no, or do some reaction. Uh, just to let me know where we are. <laughs> um, yeah, probably. Yeah, so, okay. I see most of you, I see hands and thumbs up. Thank you. Okay, someone tried mapping already. Cool. Yeah, that's, that's what I expected, that people that already use R and know ggplot and want to start plotting some geographical data. So for, I will share my screen again. Um, so for, for this, Meetup, I will use also the tidyverse package. I guess probably you all know it also. And then I will start just doing some plots using um, ggplot. So I will just load the library and I will get some data that is already included on the ggplot package. That is this, that this data work. And yeah, I will load it. You can also see it here. So this data, this data actually is a data frame, and this data frame has latitude and longitude. So you can see here, it has a group and it has a region that is also a country. Um, yeah, and you can see that, for example, for the region Aruba, so the first country that comes up, we have a lot of points. And um, yeah, the thing is that we can use this, this data from just as it is to plot it in ggplot using, for example, some of the geometries we already know from ggplot, for example, a polygon geometry. So what I will do um, is just, I will get my 
the data, I download it. Um, I will just do a plot using ggplot, and I will just say, okay, I will erase this bit to try it first. I will just uh, do a polygon, say, okay, all the X points should be the longitude and all the y, point, y points should be the latitude, the epsilon points should be the latitude. And then, really like it, not. <laughs> it's kind of a strange one, I really like it. But what's happening here, so all the points, when, when we are doing this polygon, all the points are like mm, getting, uh, that are getting like connected by a line. But the problem is that, okay, they are getting connected by a line just how they appear on our data frame. And what we want is like each region, so do you remember here, uh, each region to be connected to each other, not all the points, just how it appears. So we are just going to group uh, using the group, the grouping label here, that is also like the region. If you see here, when we change from Aruba to Afghanistan, it also changes. And now we are going to get the, the like a normal world. I just tell you this just to let you know how this, like, so that you can also have a feeling on how, how this, is, this is working. So we, we are using only based or normal ggplot here. And with only this tool, we can do already a lot of things. Like, um, I think like, only using ggplot and plotting latitude and longitude, we can already do amazing stuff. For example, the first thing, um, yeah, and another thing, so I was using geom polygon, but there's also some useful um, function that also comes with ggplot that will avoid this problem of uh, not, get, not grouping the data and getting this weird world that is this uh, border, borders. And here I'm just saying, okay, which color, how we are feeling, with which color we are feeling our polygons, and we also get the one. And yeah, as I was saying, so you can do amazing things only with using ggplot. You can, for example, over these word plots, you can plot points, lines, um, color every country by some different uh, variables you have. You can think about population, I don't know, number of COVID cases, mm. anything you, you can think about, anything you are working on also. You can also use a deep layer to just select which countries you want to work with, and then you can just do some smaller map. So let's have a look at, uh, on how we could do that. So for example, I'm getting here the Our Ladies chapters data. So let's have a look at it. So these are the chapter names, how many members each chapter has, um, and where the chapters are. So latitude and longitude again. Um, I really like, I don't know, there's this Our Lady Susuaya that's south of Argentina, where I come from. And they quite, they have, this is like, this is also, this is from, okay, so this is from 2018. This, that's a small city really, I think, in the southeast part of the world. And there is another latest chapter there. Um, so what I'm doing here, let's see, I'm again getting my data world. I'm doing a ggplot after I'm getting my data. Here I don't have to specify any data because I'm already saying I'm using the world data. And again, I'm doing a polygon. I'm just saying, okay, which color for the um, for the field and which color, um, yeah, for the surrounding of my map I want. And then I'm just do, using a normal geom point. Now I'm saying, okay, for this layer, I want the Our Ladies data to be used. I'm also setting latitude and longitude, and I'm saying, okay, the, I want the size of the point to be as big as the members uh, that that chapter has. And then, of course, the color will be purple, and and it will have some transparency. Um, yeah, I'm also setting the the scale size. Um, 
yeah, I'm also setting a label here and a title. And I'm also saying, I'm also choosing this theme, like minimal, because it looks much better for plots. So for example, I will try it first without it. And let's have a look on how it... So, I mean, you have gray in the background and yeah, uh, a lot of also color in the background. And I find like this theme that comes also with ggplot, you don't need anything else uh, to be really useful just to plot simple maps quickly. Um, so what I was telling you before is that we can also just subset some countries to make some regional maps. Um, I just chose like some countries, of the countries of South America, um, and here I'm just like getting the data, filtering all the data, and getting only the countries I'm interested in. I'm again um, calling ggplot uh, with latitude and longitude as the aesthetics. And I'm saying again, um, geom polygon, but now, um, yeah. And I'm just, um, as Phil, I'm going to use the region. So the region is in this data set, um, the country. So I will get one color per country. And let's see how it looks like. So here I just have a map of South America. Also very, very simple to do. Um, if you have any questions already, like feel free to ask. So for example, using also this data and deep layer, I can get data for my labels. I can just, again, get the data, filter the data only for the countries I'm interested in. Now I'm grouping all the countries. I'm, I'm grouping all the data per country. So I'm getting one group per country, and then I'm creating a new variable. Um, like I'm creating a new variable that is a longitude, as a mean of all the longitudes in, in each country, and latitude, but as the mean of all the latitudes in the country. So what I'm- Sorry to interrupt you. I think there's a question. Um, yeah from um, Hannah, is there an easier way to zoom in on one continent apart from listing all the countries on that continent? So you can also limit, for example, the X, Y axis. Or we can try, for example, here. Um, and then you can, you can say, for example, let's see. Let's see, I'm interested in Europe. So now I will, let's say 25 to 75, right? So, um, 25 to 75 in X, and let's see. Uh, so this is actually, this is Y, it's latitude, and X, um, You've written 27, not 75. Thank you, Divya. <laughs> and for this is for Y, and for X, let's say like minus 5 to, mm, let's say 50, right? Let's try. From minus, minus 5. So my door is opening. Hello. <laughs> um, um, let's see how this works. So th this looks really strange now. And this looks as if there were... Ah, yeah, now this looks very strange because um I was choosing mm -hmm. 
Yeah, this looks, I think, because I mean, this should work. I'm not sure. But I will show you now something. Yeah, this is looking weird. I'm not really sure why. I think it's because you're grouping by country as well. So it's taking. Yeah. You can cut yeah. the country out and the longitude and latitude within countries messing with those border countries. Yeah, probably. Mm. But the things that I, I'm not filtering the data, but anyways, so let's, we can try, for example, the borders here. Miriam suggested, um, I think Africa yeah. looks like that because you are missing the other points on the polygons. Yeah, that could be, I, I think what um, the other person, I didn't see the name was saying, but um, I mean, here I'm, not, here I'm not filtering the... But you're still grouping by group. Yeah. So that's kind of... Yeah. Yeah, probably because, I mean, I have some points for Africa, but not all the points for Africa. Yeah, exactly. Let's, I mean, we will try this a bit, a little bit late, like later where I'm going to use something else to plot and that will work there. Um, so, I mean, let's save these questions for later. And I yeah. Thank you also from Hannah. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, so... Sorry, uh, Lisa, one more question. No, no. Yeah. Um, Abhimanyu says, is it possible to compress or stretch the output? I guess it may be corrected if it's possible. So you mean like how it looks, for example? I I'm guess so. Sure if I, I will stop sharing. So I guess, I mean, I'm not sure what you are referring to. Probably it's, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's also, I like, yeah. So that's also we are going to talk about. So I will just, um, for example, now here we were, so here South America looks a bit weird. So it's kind of just compressed. Just your screen again. Thank you. So actually, actually, here South America looks a bit strange. I will just also do the map here. And for example, I try to export it, right? And then I can do all kinds of strange things with this map. And it, it really looks weird. So actually, that's, I mean, the next thing that we are going to do is like, we when we are going to plot some smaller regions, we don't want to use probably only ggplot. And that's the next part of the meetup. Actually, because of this, because I mean, we don't want to South America look like this. It looks really strange. And we want to some to have something that take, takes care on, on these proportions that are important for us to uh, understand and to recognize countries and regions. Um, yeah, that's something that comes later. And I'm glad that actually that comes now because it was going to be something that we were going to do afterwards. So, um, let's, so I, I will talk about that a bit later again. So here I was just doing the, I mean, all these tools that I'm using now, we will also be able to use them uh, with some other tools. So I will be a bit um, quick now. So actually here you can also, um, so here I was just summarizing the data to get like the mean of each country. I was also here what I s thought of doing is okay. I mean, I would also want to have just a map without uh, the axis and without the, um, the grid. So I was just create here I, and with a background panel, panel like a blue panel in the background. So I created just like a theme um, that has all the um, all the characteristics that I want for a map. 
And finally, I was using the same map as before, but adding the labels and the, and this thing. And again, um, it looks a bit strange. So, I will just, I guess, go to the part, um, yeah. So, um, actually, um, yeah, I'm thinking if I go on like this. So actually, yeah, let's, I will jump this, I will go again to this. So actually, yeah, uh, I'm glad that this question comes up, this question came up because actually, yeah, South America looks weird. And what we want to have is not, it's not something that we can just like stretch as we want or that depends on how big the plot is. Uh, we want to be careful with that. So in order to do that, there are in our so different um, tools we can use to work specifically with geographical data. And this will be really, um, so this will be helping us just to take care of this and other things. So these tools are actually some, some packages that allow us to read the different, shape, different yeah, file formats that are usually used for geographical data. So the most used uh, shape uh, file types are actually raster representations of the real world where we have um, a raster or a matrix and each pixel of the matrix has some information. It could be, for example, here it says, okay, river, forest, or house. Um, or um, it could be also just number, for example, temperature. And we also have other type of, of files, which are shape files, we, we actually, that actually have information on, for example, where the, the river is. And it, this, this file will have, okay, the point on, on the earth where, where so the, the information on the earth where these point e are, points are, and also how these points have to be connected to each other. And so all these files also have some metadata. So it will not be only, for example, a CSV with latitude and longitude. So it will have also some metadata that is related to um, how this representation was created. Um, so let's try, so I, let's try uploading on R some, some of these files. So for example, R has a um, package that allows us to direct, directly load from the internet a world, but now it won't be just, as we saw before, just a data frame with latitude and longitude it will be a shape file or um, da data on R that has these characteristics. So let's see. So I'm here loading this natural earth um, package that allows me to retrieve the data with this function. And here I'm saying I just want a medium scale. I could get more or less detail on, on, the, on the data like um, I could change the scale, like the scale or, or, of the data, how, how much detail I'm getting of the data. And then I'm also saying I want the data to have the shape file format. And I'm using here to work with shape files, I'm, I'm using here the library SF on R. So this library SF is like the follower of, of its predecessor, which was SP. Some, some functions are not already available on SF, so sometimes, um, yeah, you also need, depending on what, to, what you want to do, especially if you are going to do things that have more to do with data analysis, um, sometimes you also need to load the SP. But here, I mean, for visualization, I'm just keeping the SF data. So let's see how this data look like. So here, actually, we can see what we had before. Here, what we have is, okay, again, we have, okay, with region, with which country it is. 
but we don't have any, any more latitude and longitude. We have something that says, okay, this, this data is a multi-polygon, which, which means that it's a polygon that could have more, for example, it could have more than one polygon inside. For example, it could have this polygon and this other polygon here. It could be also, for example, lines uh, as the river, or it could be only points. If we had, for example, the, the house, which is only one point. And something else that is really important for us, if we are going to be um, careful with, with how we visualize the data, is the, um, refer so the reference system we are using, uh, the coordinate reference system. So actually, this, this information here, so this line here has all the information on how the three-dimensional air is represented in our two-dimensional data. And let's, um, so let's have a look at it. So here, for example, I'm just getting the coordinate reference system of the data I, I got. So here we can see that um, it has a lot of information. So what this information is about. So I will go really quickly with it um, and I will just simplify it a lot. So sorry if there are geographers um, of, or people that know more about that, I will do like a very big simplification. Um, so actually there are some information that this data have, for example, is the projection and the datum and the ellipsoid. Actually, those are like the, the three, uh, three things we see here. And what does that mean? So actually, um, actually here in this scheme, there is like this blue line would be just a representation of like the earth. So it's not really a sphere. It has like bumps and yeah, and some irregularities. And then what we need to do if we want to really have a representation or, of, or, or a model of the earth is to say, okay, we need to approximate it to something that um, it's simple, for example, to do calculations with. So what we actually do, or like what um, people have done like along the history and what like geographers and um, yeah, do, it's just okay, they say, okay, let's approximate this, the, the earth that is really irregular with some ellipsoid, for example, for example, the red one or the green one. And that's, something we see here. So for example, which ellipsoid is used? So one of the most used, one of the yeah, most used is this w, um, yeah, WGS84, uh, which is actually the one that Google used and it's a good one um, to, it's good when we want to do maps of the whole world. Um, it has, because it has like a good approximation everywhere, but it could be, as, as we see here, for example, this, the red one would be like the WGS84. Sometimes it could be really good, but it could be really bad in other, other areas. So there are also like um, other ellipsoids and there are also like local datums. Okay, we have an ellipsoid and we are, we only care that this ellipsoid matches the real earth in some area. So actually, this is going to best fit only one part of the Earth, and it will be really bad in other parts of the Earth. So sometimes that's important, especially when we work with data that come from different sources. For example, if we are going to get data from different governments, then probably, I don't know, here in Germany, they will be using some um, uh, Refer coordinate reference system that would be very bad in South America, for example. Um, so we, we have to really take care of that. The good thing is that now we won't have the problem we had before that now we are doing some more complicated stuff, but we won't have the problem we had before that uh, if we are careful, um, this problem that South America was looking so, so strange. So let's have a look. So actually here, um, I'm just using uh, the data that I got from, yeah, I got from this package Natural Earth. And now I'm going to go back because I, here I'm just like correcting the plot 
I did before, but I wanted to go here so to answer the question. So I'm going to go back a bit. So actually, um, let me see. Yeah, so the idea, so another thing we could do with the maps is of course, for example, map points. Um, so actually what I was doing here, um, just also combining it to other our data that I, other data that I have. So actually what I was doing here was like, I, I was getting some data from Ebert from, I don't know, I will show it from those of you who don't know it. It has like uh, citizens data from Ebert's uh, visualizations. And it, you, Ebert, yeah. And it, I, I, I don't know, it has available a lot of data from the whole world, from different um, species. And there is also, in naturalist, it has also like data from species that are not birds, so I get a lot of data, I don't know, to play from those web pages. And it's nice because it's data that is collected by, by all, by, by citizens. Um, so actually here, I'm just loading the data um, and I'm just having a look at the data. So actually, I will load it. So it, it was taking a bit because some seconds, because actually it has like more than 800,000 uh, observations. So it's quite a lot. And only, that was only for one species. So um, yeah, there is really a lot of data. And actually what I have here is again only latitude and longitude. And here I was just, okay, uh, filtering by only the data that was um, in South America. Uh, this data was, was for uh, all America, but so I, I'm, I'm here in filtering only South America. I'm only selecting some variables because it has a lot of variables that were not interesting for me. And what I'm also doing here, it was okay, I, the, the question I was, uh, I was having is okay, does this, so this is data about um, the scarlet flycatcher. And the scarlet flycatcher is like a um, migratory um, bird. So my question was, okay, can, can we see from, from these observations in eBird these movements of the birds? So actually I was creating um, uh, one new column, which was the month of the observation. Uh, and I was doing that with a library that is called Lubridate, which I was uploading here. And that has a lot of nice functions to work with temporal data. It really simplifies a lot uh, working with temporal data. So, uh, and then I had so many observations that I didn't want everything to like take some seconds. So I was just selecting randomly some points. And then I was doing some map with this um, very awful representation of South America, but where we can already see that, for example, so um, let's go back. Um, so I was for here, I was also creating like a um, scale color gradient. So all the, the, the tools that we have for ggplot are useful here. So I was uh, creating this scale color gradient and um, I was saying, okay, I want the low color to be this uh, kind of reddish pink the middle color to be blue and the high color to be again the same red because what I wanted to see is whether um, in summer or in winter um, the birds were found in different places. So um, actually the color of my polygon was the month and that's what I wanted to visualize. It's okay, in which, in which month do I find this bird and where do I find it? And um, yeah, so actually in the southern hemisphere, so summer is um, between, I would say, at least, uh, yeah, so summer is between um, December, so December and April or March, um, but like the warm months are between October and let's say, yeah, March. So I was putting red to those months that are the warmest months and blue to the uh, months that are uh, winter. And you can see here, so like in summer, they really are usually present in southern points. 
uh, but in winter, so they are not present here and they migrate to north, northern um, places. But yeah, here you can see, okay, this map look, looks really strange, especially Brazil. It looks like <laughs> a man, I don't know, the nose is here, the mouth is here, and the eye, I don't know. <laughs> um, so I wanted to do that because now I'm going to like fix this map in the next uh, part of the talk. So we already went through this part. Um, we got the data, which has, okay, the reference system, so we are not going to uh, be able to do the, any weird stretching. Um, okay, and now I'm again here using my um, bird map, the one I created before. Um, ah, sorry, no, here I'm saving the map, the bird map. Um, so I'm getting here the world data. So the data I downloaded from Natural Earth, the one that has this here, this CRS. I'm again filtering by the countries I'm interested in. Now we can, we will, let, we will also try to see how it works when we just you, uh, zoom in or zoom out with the X or Y limits. And now what I'm using that is new is this new uh, geometry for ggplot. So now I'm using a specific geometry that plots this type of um, sh shape data or, or yeah, data that has this information. And then actually I'm just over this world data that has this specific geometry SF, I'm plotting the points that have in latitude and longitude. And I'm doing again the same scale color gradient. Um, yeah, and let's see, so it's already there, but let's have a look at it. So here is the map, and now it looks a bit better. Um, if, yeah, if you look uh, straight, it has a problem because, uh, yeah, doesn't matter. If someone uh, realizes what, that, what looks strange, we will talk about. <laughs> um, but now when I just, for example, want to export this map, I just say, okay, I just want to export it. For example, copy it to clipboard. Now I, I cannot do all those strange things I was doing before. So um, the proportions of, of, of the X and Y axis are, are being kept constant. So now it looks always the same. Um, yeah. And now we can try uh, changing the X, Y, for example, Let's do it here. Um, I will just insert a new R. I will just get um, just the world data here, mm, up to here, but I will not filter the data. Let's see. Um, And now let's set something so so the x we were saying minus five to twenty five or seventy five and we were saying okay from Okay, well now I'm not so accurate on, on the on where Europe is, but this is a way of um, yeah focusing on one region without having to filter the countries. Um, if you want to filter the countries, well, you need to have a list of the countries you are interested in. Um, you don't necessarily have to type them. Uh, but probably you will need, but yeah, this is a way of um, focusing on one area without the need of um, giving a list of on, on, yeah, on 
which countries you are interested in. Right. Um, yeah. I will leave it there. I could like, I want to keep on trying to correct it, but yeah. yeah. So let's do some nice things uh, to improve the appearance of the map. I don't know if you, who you follow on Twitter or if you saw right now on Twitter, there is like a 30 day map challenge during November. So actually, if you are motivated after this workshop, it will be really nice to see your maps there. So these are some tricks to make the maps look nicer. Um, so, and, and I'm also like trying to use kind of um, simple tools. So I'm using this library PNG. And here what I'm doing, I'm just reading um, a picture I have of this uh, scholar that I catch. And here I'm using, okay, the map I used before. And I'm adding, so with annotation raster, I'm adding this um, picture in some corner of the map. So actually in the right uh, bottom corner of the map. And these are like latitude and longitudes that I'm using to, uh, yeah, to position the picture. Here again, I'm just um, setting some limits. Actually, what I'm doing is I want more space on the on the uh, on the right to have space to put this picture. Elisa. Yeah. Sorry, there's yeah. a question. She, sure. Um, from Christina, she needs help mm -hmm. in the previous map. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure which one now. The function for the polygons. Um, I guess. Yeah. Oh, okay, I think Kyla's already answered it that she needs the um, package RGOs. Oh, well, that is what the error says. Package RGOs required for finding out which hole belongs to which exterior ring. Um, is it already answered the question? Yeah, I think so. Okay, okay sorry. No, no. Don't, don't be sorry. I mean, I'm happy when there are questions. <laughs> um, yeah, actually, I don't know, um, all this, yeah, some webinars have these nice things that a lot of people can be there, but also not being able to see everyone. So at least if there are questions, I know um, where people is, uh, where people are. So actually, I'm choosing here a um, minimum theme, which I think it's nice and handy also for maps. And I'm just, for example, Choosing a color background, um, and also not only for, for the plot, but also for everything that surrounds the plot. So where the title would be, or, or where, for example, the legend would be, it would be only have a one color. And um, so I'm just setting, okay, which is the position of the legend um, and how the text would look like. And then I'm doing some annotations, like I'm, I'm putting some extra text um, there. So let's see how this looks like. And let's talk about it. So actually now I have the picture. I, I extended a bit the limits on the x-axis to have the picture. I did some annotation, okay, where did I get the data? Mm, and also like um, what the legend means. So actually, I just um, first erase the title of the legend, and in order to be able to like um, put it inside the plot, that's something it's called. It's been done um, here. Um, yeah, and that's like some some tricks to make the plot look nicer. So actually, um, having everything on the same color, like not only the plot, but also like all all the the all, everything that surround this, surrounds the plot. Um, and also being able to do some annotations, like putting some extra text. And also I think like when we do maps, having the, the scale inside and some other things, um, yeah, make the plot look nicer. Um, and then the other thing you can do is like using this, um, library, like the GG Spatial Library, you can also uh, add, for example, a scale bar and a north directly. 
and that and it's really easy to do that using GG Spatial, but of course this only works if you are using um, data that is geo-referenced. So does R can know, okay, these are 2,000 kilometers. And actually when you plot in such a big, um, such a big area, so it's not always accurate because of, all, of course you have more errors when you are plotting such a big area. But still I wanted to show you that. Um, Elisa, one more yeah. question. Sure. Nice. Uh, does, okay, I'm not sure if I'm going to pronounce ArcGIS or QGIS use raster as a coordinate system or are there other systems? Uh, rasters are coordinate systems. So actually, um, let me see. So all the files, so actually there are two file types that we usually use for, for geo for yeah, georeference data. So actually, shape files. The one I the ones. A raster with the data on pixel, and these um, shape files that are just like points that are um, yeah have a line in between that are connected somehow, uh, either only a point, either a line or a polygon, and. Rasters and shapefiles, they both will have some extra information that, for example, QGIS will read and R will read if we use the, the correct packages. That is like, okay, how this data is represented. Okay, like this point, this point, where it belongs and which representation of the Earth was used. So this, this coordinate reference system will be for, for, the, for these shapefiles, but there will, the rasters will also have this information, okay? This, this, vert, like this vertex here, that is this latitude and longitude, or this point in the Earth, which representation of the Earth do I have to use to be able to put this raster really on the spot of the Earth where it belongs to? Um, so actually, both rasters and shapefiles have this information on how they are representing the Earth. And QGIS and also R are reading this information to be able to do these maps. Um, I don't know if that answered the question. Um, shall I, st I, I will stop. So I will also have a look at it. Yeah, thanks. Yes, okay. it did. And Abhimani okay. also said there are other systems available um, such as VG, uh, WGS84. Yeah, yeah, of course. I, I will also, we will also discuss that in some minutes. Uh, but of course the WGS84 uh, 84 is the one used to map the whole world. When we go to like more specific areas, we have to be careful and use one that matches better our area. Um, but for example here, as I'm using this WGS84 uh, and latitude and longitude, I'm able to, in the same plot, put a shape file and put some points that only have latitude and longitude. And that I can do that on this plot because I have this uh, coordinate reference system that has latitude and longitude. There are other coordinate reference systems that don't have latitude and longitude, and, and we will talk a bit also about that. Um, yeah. But it's, I mean, it's handy because usually when you download, for example, data from internet that's from these platforms where you have uh, data from, I don't know, citizens data, they usually, or, or Google data, whatever, they usually come with this reference system. But it's not the only one, and it's not the one that has to be used every time. So, um, where, where are we? Uh -huh. uh, yeah, so here, um, I'm thinking. So, I mean, here is, this is another example. I, want, I will just like on how to make maps look nicer. I'm thinking about the time. Um, I will just go quickly on it so I can go on like plotting rasters, for example, also. Um, so actually here, there was a Tidy Tuesday, um, I think in April or May, that was about like um, data on black history, which was, I found it really nice. Uh, and one of the information was like uh, slave routes, so um, ships going from Africa or from Europe to South America or to North America mostly, actually mostly to North America, but also to South America. Um, 
and I got the data from that this Tidy Tuesday. Um, and actually, um, I also like got some information about big cities, and I also tried to like that was some something I wanted to do. I, I also tried to see okay, there were a lot of names that were actually names of like old colonies, and they were not just in a data set from today's cities. So actually, I just created kind of a port uh, port data. Um, and then I just yeah did some manipulation with the routes to be able to have like not only like destiny and 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 arrival but also like to have the routes and i showing the data like the data from the routes to the ports uh, and let's see uh, i will just run this yeah okay So actually what I finally got is just the route, for example, Liverpool, St. Vincent, what unspecified, and um, the city, if it was origin or, or destination, the city um, of, the, of, the, of either the, the origin or the destination, and um, yeah, also like the, the latitude and longitude. And then I just this time read like an image, like a compass. And then what I use, that is also I find handy, is this geom path. So I use the same data with the CRS, like for the whole world. And I use the geom path to, um, uh, like to connect the origin and the destination. So I just group the data. So here I just, um, yeah. So actually this geom path, here, I'm grouping the data by group, and so this geom path is going to make a line between all the points that are in this group. And this group is by root, so this root has only two points, one that has the origin and one that has the destination, so it will be create like a line between origin and destination. Um, and I find that also like really handy to do maps when we have points and we want to mm, connect them. And that's how this map looked like. Uh, and some time. And that's like the one that was on Meetup. So actually it's something very similar to what we did with the birds. So we also put some raster in it, some image. And the only difference is now I'm grouping per root and each root has two points and I'm just matching the roots. Yeah. And now finally, um, we come to working with raster. So the other, a uh, file type that we usually use for geographical data. So, um, yeah, actually, you can get some very interesting rasters from this web page, which is World Climate or World Clean. I will show you also. Um, so, this page has like nice um, data, for example, historical climate data. This is very useful, um, for example, when people work with um, species distribution and you want to know, okay, in which the, this, the, the species, do they live in, in like higher temperatures or lower temperatures? And then you have like a data set with, for the whole world. And then you can um, yeah, get the data for different variables in different resolutions um, and also for the whole work. And what is nice is that you can uh, gather this data directly from, from R, or, or at least some part of the data directly from R. For example, here, actually what I'm getting here is a raster. Uh, and I can just, I, uh, um, for that, I have to load the library raster, which is the one that allows me in R to manage this, this uh, data this data type. And actually, when I get work time, I get a lot of variables like um, temperature, precipitation, etc. The first one is temperature, and I'm just plotting um, the first one, and it looks like that. 
So it's the temperature. And actually, um, it has to be divided by 10. That's why it has this very, very uh, high number. It's not actually um, 300, but 30. And it's, I think the mean temperature as average for, uh, I don't know, I think they have for an average of the la last 30 years or, or so. Um, so yeah, here's where you can find the name of the variables and, and more information. And now what we usually need to do is to combine like um, rasters and shape, the, and shape files. So actually, I find that to do that, I mean, when I just say plot raster, actually I'm using um, like the plot function that comes with the raster library. Um, but I find that uh, for combining a lot of different data, data um, types, I find that this library tmap, which is the one we are going to talk about in the last um, part of the workshop, um, very useful, like this library team. Um, but before that, let's, we are going to talk also about um, working with data coming from, from different sources, with different uh, coordinate reference systems, because, because that's something that we find really uh, frequently, and that can be a headache if we are not aware of it. So here I'm just, again, I mean, just uh, making sure that I have both libraries that I need. I'm getting some data. Um, this data, I also downloaded it from this um, World Climate data, but I already have it downloaded because it has more resolution and it was taking uh, longer to show. And also, it's, yeah. Right. I'm just, yeah. Quick question. What yeah. is the way in which data is stored in a raster file? Are they objects or latitude, longitude? Uh, well, they are rasters like a picture. So if you take a picture, you have a raster already. The difference is that um, this, this, this special raster comes with this metadata. So actually, if you see it, uh, I will go there. Actually, if I go to data, um, and I see here is .tif. So it's actually um, the same format that you might have for a picture. The difference is that this file also has some data um, that comes with it apart from, from, like from the raster data that says, um, if I will go here, if this is my raster here, so this file also has information, okay, where is this point? So where is this point in the world? Um, how big is each pixel? Um, and yeah, how, yeah, actually I think only one point and how big is each pixel? Like how many meters do I cover or how many degrees do I cover with each pixel? And, um, and then I have the value of each pixel that these values can be anything, can be numbers, can be names, can be letters, I don't know, can be anything. It could be only, for example, some categorical data like land use or Mm, yeah, for example, land use, if it's um, natural area, urban area, water, or it can have, a, as in this case, numbers for temperature. And yeah, um, so this is how these, these files uh, store the information. Um, something else. Um, yeah, and usually, for example, they come usually with whole numbers like this. It's not 30.0, but it's 300, um, because, I mean, it's less costly to store 300 than 3.0 in a, in, a, in a computer. So you usually have to also be careful, okay, if you have to transform the numbers, but uh, yeah. Was, um, was the question, uh, did I answer the question? Um, yep. Yep. Okay. Um, so, okay. So actually here, actually that for, to load a raster, um, I'm sure I need to call this function raster and I'm saying, okay, go to my folder data and get that, that file. And it's not only reading the, the raster, like the picture, but it's also reading the information where this picture is on the earth. And then I need this other function that's strread um, to read shapefiles, this other type of files here. 
um, that if you're interested in that, so also shape files. Usually, I only load the shape file, but I also need all these these other files to be in the same folder. They, they are all um, gathered by the computer when I only read this. They are gathered by R or by QGIS when I only read this shape file. Um, and okay, yeah. Uh, so, uh, like, let's create some hypothetical problem. Let's say I'm, I have different sampling points in Germany, points I'm interested in. Um, I'm interested also in the temperatures, if temperature difference between like summer and winter on that points because of some resort, some res, uh, reason that has to do with my research. I don't know. Um, and the, the question is, okay, how do we map this raster with these points that are here? So these sample sites are on these shape files. Now, for, if I go back here, it's not anymore the house and the forest, but I have, instead of the house, okay, where are my sampling sites? Um, and how do we plot this uh, together? So, um, here there is more links to get data. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do, so here I'm just loading the two rasters, so the one for July and the one from for January. And I can do some using rasters when the rasters have the same resolution, that means they are in the same part of the world and they have the same pixel size. Um, I can just do very simple operations like subtracting one to the other. So I'm just to July, I'm just subtracting the December to get the difference of uh, temperature. And I can do it because I got the two rasters from the same source. So actually, if you want to compare things, um, you will probably get them from the same source um, and it will be easy to, to compare. And here I'm just plotting also, also using like this plot function that comes with um, with the raster package, I'm just plotting the difference and it makes sense. So in the equator, I have really almost no difference. And as soon as I go further to the poles, it gets more. And I'm really surprised some places in the world that have 60, grad, 60, 60 degrees difference between summer and winter. It's crazy. Um, okay. So, um, now uh, here, I'm, what I'm doing, I'm just getting Germany from the shape data that I used also for South America. And what I need to do now is what we were discussing. Um, yeah, I have these typos. Uh, what we were discussing before. Uh, I have to be sure if I want to plot everything together that everything has the same refer coordinate reference system. So. Um, how do I do that? So uh, actually the raster function, the raster library and the um, uh, shape file library, so the SF library has a function to get the CRS from uh, for my data. So let's um, try this here, see, ah, I didn't run this, and probably I run this. Okay. Um, so we're here. Mm -hmm. So I get my coordinate reference system for Germany, and let's get it for my um, sites here. And here you can see they are not they are not the same. So actually. Um, this is the one we were using, so the one that is used usually for global data, and this is one that is used here in Germany. So it's actually a projection, so it's not anymore um, in latitude and longitude, so I don't have any more long lat or degrees as a unit. When I'm measuring, I have now meters, so my units are meters, so that means it is projected. And um, actually, I'm using another ellipsoid, which is one that, I don't know, I think they was created um, to use to be used in Europe. And actually, in this, in this um, coordinate reference system, I have different zones. So I don't have a whole thing for the whole world. I have like zones. I, I, um, yeah, doesn't matter, but um, yeah. They are different and that can be a problem if we want to plot them together. So actually, 
what I'm doing here is just change. Uh, yeah, I'm just here. I'm comparing. We will see. It. I'm com here. I'm, I'm comparing the coordinate reference system of Germany with the coordinate reference system of uh, my sites and with the coordinate reference system of the shape file. So let me just run this. So that's what we got, and we are like we see. Okay, they are they are different. So what we actually has have to do is, is to transform the data and fortunately there is um, one function to transform rasters and one function to transform shape files. Um, usually it's easier and recommended to transform the shape files because when you transform the, the rasters usually you have to recalculate the value of the pixels and that takes long and also you are changing your data. Um, so whenever you can, because sometimes you can't, you are requested to work with some coordinate system or um, you have everything in one coordinate system and only one raster in another um, and you can't, but if you can choose, it's better just to transform your shape. That's what we are doing here. And now, okay, now we have, if you remember, we have a whole shape file for the whole world and then we have a shape, uh, we have a raster for the whole world. We have a shape file for Germany and some points that are inside Germany that are my sampling points. So what I want to do is just to cut this raster um, into and only get like a piece of the raster where Germany is. And to do that, um, I can say first I have to say, okay, where is my my um, raster like? Where is my shape file located? In, in which part of the whole raster, like which square? And then I can do that using this function extent of uh, my Germany shape file transform because I transformed it before, like the coordinate reference system. And here I get okay, which is the x the minimum, the maximum, and the y minimum and y maximum. And then I just can crop my shape file um, and say okay crop my shape file that was a difference, the temperature difference, using a Germany extent, which are these four points I calculated here. Um, yeah, and, and just get the, this snap that is inside. And now I'm going to plot this uh, cropped raster, and I see that I only have a square, like between the uh, x, minimum and x maximum, y minimum and y maximum. I mean, that's closer to what we want, but it's not actually what we want. We want only Germany. So we can use another function that is the function mask that will uh, put NAs, NAs in all the, in all the, um, all the uh, pixels that are not inside Germany. Let's have a look at this. And now we do have only Germany. Why don't we directly use mask? Because it's um, yeah, it's also uh, costly, like uh, on computation and site and time, <laughs> um, uh, and that's why it's better first to crop, which is some easy calculation, and then to mask um, if we have like the wall and we are only getting at the end Germany. Um, yeah. So finally, we are getting to Tima, which is a um, very nice um, library. And what is also very nice about Tima, about Tima it, it, is that it follows some um, similar um, grammar to ggplot. So for those of you who have worked with ggplot but not yet with Tima, it will be not so hard. It's like ggplot converted to what we need to uh, work with um, geographical data. Um, and actually, first we just set okay how we want to. I could even not use that, but this is just to set how I don't. I want to visualize my data and uh, my my map. Sorry, and then I will have a lot of these TM shape um, functions. And for each TM shape function, I have one of my um, my, my data. So I have my mask diff. So it's just like this one that I want to plot. Then I have like uh, Germany transform that was my shape file for, for Germany with the right coordinate reference system. And then I have my sites transform. And for each of them, I have like one TM uh, slow, uh, low dash, <laughs> uh, sorry, I, uh, shape. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. And then I have this, that, that means, okay, um, plot this and plot it for the first time, plot it as if, for, like, it's, uh, like as if it were a raster, you have to tell, okay, plot it like a raster. And then um, use the color, like the content of my shape file in this case. Um, yeah, and use this title. Then for the for the Germany, I okay use this data and just plot the borders. I could also, for example, plot like a field um, a field shape file as we did before for the whole world. But in this case, I shall, I just plot the borders. And um, for my sites, I can just as in R, okay, I will choose simply symbols and then which are points. You choose a color, a scale, a size. Um, yeah, uh, actually, um, yeah, if I want them to be, for example, here, it's the back. So I'm also going to uh, put some text on it. So the text is going to be the site. So each site has a name on the shape file. Um, I will show you that site. And site transform. So each, uh, each site, so on the variable site, I have a name, then I have latitude, longitude, and then I have, uh, because I transform everything to this WGS84 uh, CRS. Um, and then I have a geometry. Before for the world, I have a geometry um, polygon. Now I have only points. Um, and then I'm using this column site to give names to my points. And this size is going to be the size of the text. This is like how far or close to the point the name will be placed. Um, and for example, here is the background color because it, sometimes you need a background color if you have a raster that have, has colors and you are um, writing something on it, you need some background color. Um, some transparency for the background. Um, yeah, uh, and these are like some layouts for the whole plot. Like, okay, I want to have some margins. I also want some um, position of of my legend. I want. I can add a compass. Um, yeah, and a scale bar. So let's see how it looks. Yeah, and then it looks like this. And actually, there are some nice. Um, some nice um, themes for like themes for um, or styles for the maps. Mm -hmm. And now this looks really nice, or I find it really nice. I guess because I like all looking maps. Uh, but it's also very, there are different, um, yeah, there are different styles, and they are usually nice uh, and very easy to use. And what is really cool about this package is that when we only change this view mode, so the, the here when we only change the team map mode from plot to view here we can already have like an uh, interactive map. And what I did for this interactive map is I only um, erase the, na the name of the points. So I we will see the map without the name of the points. And I find it cool, like one line of code and we do such cool things. So here is my map with the, different, with the temperature difference. And now I don't have any more the name of the maps, of the points, but I can go to one point and see, okay, this is Hartz, this is um, Arnsberg, um, here is the other, um, Karlsruhe, yeah. And what does, it's also nice is that if you want to say, okay, wh what is like, which cities are around my points, I can just, for example, um, take like, okay, 
see, okay, yeah, my point Karlsruhe is not, it's somewhere close to Karlsruhe and there are other cities around it. Uh, and you can just activate or deactivate uh, any of the layers. And I find it really nice because it's really, really easy to do cool plots. And then, for example, when you are, if I would click this to a mark, to a markdown, then it would be uh, be interactive also. Um, and now I will show you some, one more example of things you can do with Tmap before we go uh, for the questions. So going back to like world data or plotting in a larger scale. I mean, you could, if you have, for example, a sam sampling area or some, I don't know, plots where you are interested, that you are interested in, you can really zoom in using uh, Tmap um, and the reference system that is according to that, if you have your shape files or anything. Or if you are interested in like social processes that go on a bigger scale, then you can just, yeah use this other bigger scale. So actually here, I'm just uh, getting some data about Metropolis. This data comes with Tmap. Um, I'm going back to the plot, plot, plot mode. And then I'm just saying, okay, how much this, um, this data that has information about the Metropolis, let's have a look at it. Mm -hmm. So it actually has, has like information about population, how the population of these cities um, has been changing. Um, yeah. And I just calculated like some um, difference between like 2010 and 2020 and put it on a new variable growth. And then here I'm just creating again a map where I have the whole world as one layer and I'm saying, okay, create polygons um, and actually this this data polygons also comes with this data world also comes with some data there are some questions or? yeah what yeah. do point and geometry columns store in tmap what do again sorry what do point and geometry columns store in tmap so i'm not sure if I understand what they store or what, because actually Tmap is uh, visualize, it's like visualizing data that is stored on a, some, some data frame or some shape file or some um, raster file. So actually, um, for example, in this case, when I'm just plotting from my map, from my, I'm saying, okay, from my, data that is called mass difference plot it as a raster that's actually what you're saying and and then use uh, the variable layer to put color to this to this raster or it's i think easier to understand with the for example with the with the shape files we can have a look again so actually there will be for example on our on the shape file here on the transform sites so on my points, actually, yeah, I have some information. That information is actually on, on my data. So I go here and I see, okay, now my transform sites. Um, here's my transform. And I Sorry, have, Elisa, this, this yeah. is Pavitra. Um, it's actually ah, the yeah. last, your last example, the one that you were just working on. When you did data of that, that data file, I saw that there were two columns there, like the last one that you were doing after this. Yeah. Um, there were two columns there when you did um, data of that metro. There were two columns. Uh, one was point and one was uh, geometry. So I was okay. actually I was wondering what uh, they yeah. stored. Let's, let's go again to this. You mean this here? Yeah, and then there's one, there's that point there, and then it says geometry, like down, if you, yeah. So yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Actually, the variable is geometry. If I go to call names, call names, um, geometry. Thank you for the clarification because I was definitely not understanding your question. Um, sorry, call names, metro, that's what I wanted. Um, I just say that I have name, name long, 
some how like country names are stored, then the population, and then I have geometry here. And here I have point because actually um, this is saying okay, which kind of geometry I have inside? Do I have a point? Do I have a line? Or do I have a poly? Um, but actually inside geometry, we are storing which kind of um, shape do we have? Uh, and so to uh, actually like to define that, we need to know if it's a point, if it's a um, line or a polygon, and that's the first thing. And then we need like all the um, coordinates. So actually, for example, for world, here again in the variable geometry, I have, um, I don't have any more point. I have a multi polygon. That means that each country and have many polygons. I don't know if uh, a country has an island or something. Then it will have more than one polygon. And then inside all the points that um, create that polygons are stored. Uh, and, and and in the one here in metro, there is actually there is actually only the column geometry, which is saying okay. Which point do I have? Uh, which geometry do I have? Which is a point, and uh, how the the point is defined, or where the point is. That's, that answers the question. Better. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, okay. So I'm on this shapefile metro. I'm creating a new variable, which is actually how much it, it, it grew. And um, just to like get to the end, I think this is also a nice map. So actually, I'm just um, using the shapefile world, which has the information about the which income income group has each country. Um, and now in this type of shapefile, so we have one line per country, and um, we are also getting our shape our shapefile metro, which, which only has points, but. Um, we are um, actually we are using as color growth, so the color will be grow. Like the color will be this variable we created growth, but the size will be the population in the in 2010. And then we are yeah creating okay color like um, how transparent it is. Here we are saying okay how do we want to um, create our um, legend for for. The, um, for this variable, like we want to make it um, with breaks and in a fixed style, in always like the same sizes or the same like cuts on the data, which palette we are using and which which style which style for the map we are using, and let's plot it. And I think we will end with this. Um, yeah, and it looks all a bit um, inside each other, so we can. Also, something nice on Tmap is this um, function that um, like arranges the, everything for itself when you are plotting with a map. Um, okay, and now, um, yeah, we have the map where we have the income group of the country um, in blue scales. We have the metropolis population in, in 2010 with, with sizes, and we also have like the growth rate. And then we have a lot of information only in one map in not so many code lines. We could also make it interactive if we want with only one code line. Um, yeah, uh, and that's why I think like Tmap is really, really nice. I mean, we can use shape files. We can put a lot of information in one map. Uh, actually, this, this example is, I, I will put the source, but I found it and I really like it because you really ha can have a lot of information at only one, one plot. So um, I think with this I will end. Uh, so there are like some minutes for questions. We can also, um, yeah, I will stop sharing here. I mean, one more thing I was that was here. You can also do face, uh, create faces just as you do with ggplot. It's very similar. Um, but I think it, it's just the same, just adding like uh, the faces. Um, so I will stop sharing my computer just to see if there are some questions before we finish.
Yeah, there's just one question that I haven't yeah. said out loud yet. Um, for the plots after, I'm not sure where, but she means the TM underscore style underscore gray and TM underscore format underscore world underscore wide are unknown functions. Um, yeah. Do they stem from a separate package or, is, um, or am I mm. overlooking something? I'm afraid so. Um, so actually, I didn't upload another package. I'm afraid that uh, I have another version of Tmap, and these are deep, deep depreciated, and um, because I'm also getting a warning message somewhere. Have a look at it. Um, so here I'm, I'm having this um, warning message: TM format world is depre depreciated. Uh, use TM format. Board. So that's probably the problem you are having, um, that you have a newer version of TMAP that does not support anymore the functions that for me are depreciated. And then you should probably use this TMAP format word. Yeah, that are, that, that these are like these um, reproducibility problems. Um, yeah, I hope you can fix it or I can, for, I will upload a newer version with this problem um, solved. Um, One oh, more question. I see the question now because okay. I'm not sure. Thank you, Delia. So the question is uh, that she has some data that only has country names uh, or city names. So actually you can use uh, this uh, other world data we are using, um, even like not, not the one, I mean, you could use the one from ggplot if you feel uh, comfortable. If you want to use Tmap, it's really easy because then you get also these, um, I will share my computer again, but so I will share again quickly um, my screen. So somewhere at the beginning, right? Uh, when we corrected our weird looking map, uh, we were getting the data from natural earth data. I think uh, Tmap also get, has some data. Um, but here, you see each, each line is a country. Um, so you could import data um, that has probably a column with the country with the data here. Um, yeah, with the data here using this column. Um, and then I will stop, now I will stop sharing my screen. And then you could use uh, all, only like countries and any data from you want. Um, you have to be careful because sometimes how the names, the names of the countries don't always match. I think for Europe it's easy, but when you start working, for example, for Africa or Asia, then yeah, you have to be careful that all the countries are named the same. Uh, And there is another question, I guess. Sometimes someone is asking like to up, update this already. Um, I will share again the, the screen and see if, if I can do it quickly and if it works quickly, I hope. If not, I promise I will, um, yeah, I will do it for, like the, I will upload the data on, the, on our GitHub, on our GitHub and it will be corrected there. I will see if we can, um, if it works here. Um, well, here, for example, here, right? Um, ah, so for example, here, I think I, ah, for example, here, I already changed it. For example, here I already changed it, and here I was keeping the old version. And then we should also need, like, let's see if this works. And I, I, I'm not consistent how I'm using it. Now. Now I will improve. <laughs> and so it says change by word. Let's see. There we 
Let's see if this one's. So world is unknown. White, gray, natural, albatross, black and white. Probably let's go back to the message here. A TM format, not TM style. So I think now it's working. So yeah, actually I was using like functions that were dep depreciated. Now I now it's working, it's just use, using, I know it's not working. Um, and for months. No. Um, yeah, I don't want to, I mean, it's, I know it's important, but I don't want to like spend time on these coding um, problems that I will, I promise I will solve, but I don't want to have you there, like looking at me making mistakes. <laughs> um, yeah, but I, I promise, I mean, we will upload it. I will just now get the GitHub link of our ladies so that. Elisa, there's one last question yeah. that I think we missed from early on. Um, is it possible to plot graphs in the map, say a bar chart within a polygon? Uh, again, sorry? Is it possible to plot graphs in the map? So can you plot a bar chart within a polygon? Yeah, it, it is possible. Yeah, it is possible. So for example, Tmap has, um, I will like, no, no, but, Tmap has a possibility, for example, to do histograms right in your relation. Um, so that is possible. And also you can like, th there is a nice package that was a GG map. Uh, I finally decided not to use it because it was like easy to do this kind of things, for example. But then now you need like to have some connection to Google and some keys. So I decided not to use it. Um, I will, then I will try also to get an example before I upload the, yeah, before I upload the, the data, but it is possible. Yeah, definitely. Um, ah, and here Julia says that there are uh, some packages that help you to convert the names of the countries to standard names, which is great to know because I, for cities, I have spent a lot of time sometimes trying to, for example, for this old data that have, I don't know, cities from, that do not exist or change names. Um, yeah. There were um, also some comments early on, like not questions, but just helpful mm -hmm. comments. I didn't want to interrupt you um, in between, but for everyone attending, I hope you um, saw the comments as and when they were coming in. And if not, um, if anyone had something helpful to say, if you could post it again in the chats right now, we could um, reiterate it again. And also if there are any questions that we've missed out, um, please feel free to repost them in the chat now. Um, we'll just give you a few minutes. I mean, I'm, I'm open and glad if you have the comments. I unfortunately couldn't read them. I guess I, I will be able. Um, but yeah, I mean, these are many topics and I went quick through many of them. I know more about some and not so much about others. So all comments yeah, are welcome. So thank you <laughs> um, for being here. Okay. If there are no other comments or questions, then thank you very much, Elisa. Everyone's commenting now saying they really enjoyed your insightful and really nice presentation. Um, we will post everything, including Elisa's talk from today um, on different platforms. So every all the material will be on GitHub and the talk yeah. will be on um, YouTube. Um, so yeah, thank you everyone. Uh, Thank you, everyone. I posted the, the GitHub from our latest fragment, but if you Google it, you will find it quickly and yeah. it, everything will be there and the video will be on YouTube, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Bye.